Hello gang, we're going to solve some real exam problems that involve Gibbs free energy and spontaneity using this equation right here. And it's going to involve some calculations and it's going to be pretty awesome. So this is our first exam problem here. Calculate the change in entropy in joules per Kelvin mole for the sublimation of iodine in a closed flask at its sublimation temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. And here we have iodine in equilibrium, it's solid and a gas because it's sublimating, so going from a solid to a gas, and they, we have the change in enthalpy of sublimation of 62.4 kilojoules per mole. So to calculate the change in entropy, and we're given the change in enthalpy and this reaction, we're going to use, of course, our Gibbs free energy equation, and I'll just write it out here, minus T delta S. Now, at the sublimation temperature, the two phases are in equilibrium. So when they're in equilibrium, then the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to zero. This is at the temperature of any phase change. This is true. So know this, and yeah, there we go. So then we can say that zero is equal to the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. Uh, that's it. And oh, there's no standard state. Ah, I'm so used to it. See these superscripts? They mean it's at a standard pressure of one bar but we don't know if, if it's at one bar or not. That's not given, so I won't put those in there. Okay, we're solving for, what are we solving for? Uh, the change in entropy. So we want to rearrange this equation, and I'll just move this over, divide by T, change in entropy equals the change in enthalpy, divided by the temperature, and we'll just kind of plug and chug 62.4 kilojoules. I'll do times 10 to the three joules. You don't have to. Oh yeah, I, we do, because this is in joules. Usually, entropy is in joules, divided by the temperature. Now, the temperature is 245 uh, degrees Celsius, but we need it in Kelvin, so 2.73.15 plus 45 degrees Celsius equals, and I'll put that in our calculator, so 62.4 62 times 10 to the power of 3, divided by 273.15 plus 45. And, oh, I didn't do the divided by. I love these calculators where you can see what you typed. See that? I can, there we go. Now I won't get it wrong. Sweet. Okay, 192, 196.1. So that's 196.1 uh, to three sig figs. And joules per wall, oh, this is degrees Celsius down here. But the whole thing is going to be in Kelvin. It's supposed to be a capital K. So it'll be joules per mole kelvin to three sig figs Alrighty, calculate the melting point of tungsten so this is pretty sweet we're given thermodynamic data and we could actually determine uh, what the melting point or phase change what temperature a phase change occurs so we have these enthalpy and entropy changes uh, data and we know that at the melting point so this is a phase change right and at any phase change phase change at any phase change, the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to zero. So if we set up our, oh, oh yeah, these are, I was just looking at the superscript, and we have superscripts here, so we got to keep it at, here. that means it's at one bar. This is the Gibbs free energy equation, minus T delta S. One thing I didn't put down last time was this is for fusion, the other one's for sublimation put the superscript there okay well this is zero again and we're solving for the the melting point this time so the temperature will equal if we kind of rearrange this this is zero right this this gives free energy so this is zero and then we just solve for t is the change in enthalpy of fusion divided by the entropy change of fusion doing a couple algebraic steps at the same time hope that's okay Okay, so the enthalpy, oh, this is very important. See, this is in kilojoules. I'm going to plug it in uh, rather than uh, write it down rather than plug it into the calculator. Th this change in enthalpy is in kilojoules, but the change in entropy is in joules. And this gets uh, some of us. We want to make sure it's always in the same unit. So we got to do times 10 to the 3 to get it in kilojoules or to get it in joules so that joules. We have joules up, up here, and then joules down in the denominator cancels out. That's super important. Joules per mole. Okay, now we'll plug it in. So 35.2 times 10 to the power of 3 
divided by 9.5657, oops, divided by 9.57. Oh, that's a very high temperature, but this is tungsten. Okay, so that makes sense, I think. Uh, 3678, 3678. Now, this is in Kelvin. Uh, oh, I missed a unit. See, there's a Kelvin here. So this should be a Kelvin down here. Kelvin, mole. So that these all joules cancel out. And then we're with 1 over Kelvin. Kiss and flip, it becomes Kelvin. And we only have, is it 3 sig figs? 3 sig figs. So 3,680 Kelvin. Minus it by 273.15 to get degrees Celsius. Okay, awesome possum. So let's predict the sign of the entropy change. And this is of the system because there's no subscript rather than the surroundings for this reaction. And this is under one bar as well for this reaction. So this must be the reaction. And whether it will be spontaneous at, as the temperature is increased. Okay, so we don't have a lot of information, but we do have this balanced chemical equation. And we're going from a gas and a gas to a gas and a liquid. So it's like if we have like gases in here in a container, see like these are gases, and then our container is creating, we're creating this liquid, also gas as well on top of the liquid. But because things are being condensed, we're producing a liquid, we have less possible arrangements, less possible arrangements when there's a liquid in here. See that molecules of the liquid are, they're kind of stuck together. They can roll around each other, but they can't fly all over the container. Here, both species can fly all over the container. So there's a lot more arrangements, a lot more microstates, a lot more disorder in the reactants than in the products. And because of that, because we're creating kind of more order uh, and less possible arrangements, the entropy change has to be less than zero. Okay, if you're not sure why, I got a, I got a whole video bunch of videos on entropy, what it is, and whether it's increasing or decreasing and things like that. Uh, so check those out because uh, you'll definitely need to know these for the exams. But because of this, because we're condensing things down, it's negative. <laughs> okay, so if the reaction is going to be spontaneous or not, based on changing the temperature, we need to look at the Gibbs free energy equation. Minus T delta S. And we know that this is negative. And we want to know if it will be spontaneous. So spontaneous, spontaneity it occurs when the change in Gibbs free energy is negative. Now, if this is negative, this whole thing, this whole term is positive, then increasing the temperature will make it worse for being spontaneous or not. It'll still be, it, we, if we want this to be negative, we want the temperature to be as low as possible so that this term isn't too large since it's, it's a positive term here. So as the temperature is increased, the delta, the change in Gibbs free energy is going to be um, smaller negatively, and eventually it might even become positive if temperature is, is high enough. So will it be spontaneous as the temperature is increased? No, no, it'll be non-spontaneous. Right on, sweet beans everyone. Thanks for watching. Hope you got some value from it. And I'll see you in the next video. Check out my other videos too. I got so many on, on thermodynamics. It's like insane. Like I've got many, 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 many uh, videos and also other aspects of chemistry, math, and physics. Okay, cheers.